Welcome to this microwave tutorial on how to use NVIDIA digits. My name is John Murphy and in this tutorial we will build an image classifier comprised of an artificial neural network. We'll be using the latest version of digits, version 2.1. For computing the network we'll use four Tesla K80 GPUs. Assuming you are already you already have digits installed. We'll walk through how we start the digit server on our cluster. Uh, depending on whether you are running digits on a workstation or in a cluster, starting digits will involve different commands. Since the details of starting the server will differ depending on your system, I will just quickly demonstrate how digits is started on our test cluster. Uh, we're running Slurm, the Slurm batch scheduler, uh, and your command invocation for submitting batch jobs uh, may not be the same as ours. So um, we use a bash shell wrapper script, which uh, requests resources from Slurm, and this particular script that I am uh, now going to invoke will request four uh, Tesla K80 GPUs. So I'm running this now. Um, the scheduler is allocating a compute node um, and this uh, typically takes a few minutes to start up. Uh, it's reacting very quickly now. Um, so in just a minute or so um, we should get a message from the digit server uh, indicating that it's up and online. Okay, so here's the um, ASCII art banner indicating that the server is running on the machine on port 5000. So at this point um, you can go to your web browser. Here I'm using Firefox and actually uh, we want to check which um, which node we're on. We're probably on node 6, so I'm going to enter node 6 here, port 5000. So it should take just a minute to respond and then we'll be on the digits landing page. Okay, so here we are on the landing page and um, Indicated here in the upper right hand corner uh, is the information that we have four out of four GPUs available. Uh, there are two GPUs per Tesla uh, K80 card, so that means that we have two cards in this uh, particular node. So from here, we want to um, Create an image set. So under under new data set, click on this images bu button, and then select classification from the drop down menu. So this takes us to the um, this uh, data set creation page. There are different tabbed areas here. We're going to use images uh, from a folder a uh, directory of folders that uh, that I created. Here uh, we're going to classify two objects, in particular two uh, types of SUVs. One is the 2015 Jeep Cherokee and the other is, is the 2015 Land Rover. So I, I have two uh, subdirectories that are in a, a that are nested within a parent directory. So we will we will start by specifying the uh, the path to the parent directory here in this field. So 
I'm at home, John, NVIDIA, digits, we're in um, images, SUV, expanded set, so that's our, that's our parent directory. There are, again, there are two uh, subdirectories nested within this uh, parent directory. So, okay, uh, we selected that directory. Now, when, when we have all of our images and um, all the validation and, and uh, training images in the same directory, there's no, there's no need to uh, specify separate folders. I mean, you could specify a separate folder, but here um, I have them all in the same subdirectories. So, digits will sort of automatically select images for validation. Um, we don't have to select any images for testing. Okay, so there is um, there is the other option of using uh, text files. If you use a text file, you are required to have at least a training uh, file and a validation file, which basically uh, consists of a list of URLs that point to images on the web. Uh, so we're just going to use um, these images that I've already collected and and actually I I expanded the image set so it was amplified by sampling or taking sub samples of the base set I expanded each uh, category to approximately 30,000 images so this was done in order to uh, prevent the neural network from uh, becoming overfit to the data. So whenever using a deep network, you will want to ensure that the image set is large enough in order to prevent overfitting. Otherwise, the network may not perform well at identifying test objects, which um, might deviate uh, in appearance from uh, the sorts of objects in the training and validation sets. Okay, um, so there there are several more uh, techniques to prevent overfitting, which involve concepts that are not in within the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so now uh, to uh, to create the uh, to finish this um, data set creation, I have to change this default here for the image encoding from PNG to JPEG. My images are all in uh, JPEG format. So one other note here about the uh, image size. The default is 256 by 256. That's because two of the, um, of the uh, neural network networks that were that are standard in digits uh, expect the input images to be of these pixel dimensions. If your images are not exactly 256 by 256, if they are larger than that, or if they do not have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, digits does have this um, resize transformation feature, which is very convenient. It will automatically scale your images so that they are exactly 256 by 256, or else they wouldn't fit into the um, neural network input. Okay, so now finally, I'm just going to uh, name the image set. So I'll come up with a uh, subject appropriate name, SUV image set. Uh, this is an expanded set. I expanded upon the original data set by doing window subsampling. So I'll call this expanded, and then this is a tutorial, so I'll just uh, append it with tutorial. Okay, now to start creating it, we just click create. And uh, this, this set is comprised of about 60,000 images, so it's going to take about uh, 10 minutes for for it to run through and and uh, create the database 
the database files and, and everything that sit in a hidden directory uh, within my home directory. So as you can see, uh, it's already started. Uh, you can monitor the progress here. There's just the progress bar. If we scroll down a bit, we see this bar chart, which indicates how many images are in each category in our training set. So we have approximately uh, 28,000 or 29,000 for for the training, and then down in validation, that's uh, just 25% of the original total. So we have about 10,000 here. Okay, so I'm just going to um, I'm going to let this run for a while. You see here it's already at 7% and it's estimating 12 minutes remaining. Uh, so I'm just going to pause this and then we'll we'll resume when this is um, finished making the data set. Okay, so we're back. There's only about a minute left for the um, database build. I just wanted to show you my directory organization. So you can see the path here is pointing to some parent directory and I have uh, the two subdirectories for my two different object types. This text file you see here is really uh, just something that was left over from when I was um, running with text file inputs and this was actually for another classification I was doing on aircraft. All right, so so here again uh, we have these uh, bash shell wrapper scripts, and uh, we can take a quick look at one just to give you a sense of how we uh, request resources on our Slurm batch scheduler. So there's the s alloc command. So here we're requesting uh, two CPUs and a total of four GPUs. This of course has its own particular syntax and if you're not using Slurm, this of course won't be very helpful to you. Um, but let's take a look at the job queue. It's just indicating that um, on node 6, you can run digits on a desktop uh, workstation or you can run it on a cluster. If you're running it on a desktop, the invocation for starting the server is somewhat simpler. You really just have to invoke this command here at the command line in some terminal digits dash dev server and that will start the digit server for you if you're just running it on a workstation. However, if you're running it on a cluster, you have to work with the job scheduler. And depending on you know, whether you're running SGE, Torque, PBS, or something else, the invocation will, will be a little bit different for your setup. Um, <clears throat> OK, so it looks like the uh, database build is uh, is done. So let's go back to the uh, digits landing page. Okay, now from here we want to click on the images button under the model section. So we'll get a drop down menu again and uh, again select classification. So this will take us to a um, a GUI where we can specify parameters for our neural network. So here on the left we see the uh, data set that we just created, so of course we're going to select that. Here we have options for uh, transforming the data. Generally I think you want us to track the mean file that, that helps with the uh, network performance. Down here we have some we have some tabs and uh, under standard networks uh, we have Linet 
AlexNet, which was the disruptive network that was um, published in 2012. And there's Google Net, and we'll we'll click on Google Net. And next, once you make your selection, you can click on the uh, customize button to get some information about how the network is structured in this text field here. This is called Prototext and it's uh, basically a high-level description, a descriptive language that basically describes the elements of the neural network. Then there's the option of visualizing the network which uh, calls up a nice illustration with all the layers and the abstract representations in the network. And it's taking a bit of time to come up. So you can you can check that check that out when you when you take digits for uh, a test drive. There's also the option here of using the uh, previous networks since I have run image sets uh, in the past and I've I've run classifiers I've built classifiers before this so if you select previous networks the classifiers that you've built before will come up as options that that you can use again okay so uh, so let's look at the solver options for large networks or uh, what are called deep networks and large image sets generally you want to increase the number of epochs of training so here I'm I'm going to increase this from 30 to 60 uh, my interface is has become a little bit unresponsive. Sorry, I just have to wait a second for it to come back. Okay, let's take a pause here. Okay, we're back. So here uh, is the previous network tab, and this just has some radio button selections of previous networks that that I had uh, trained. So under solver options, as I was saying before, uh, we want to change this to 60. And then for the learning rate, which is by default 0.01, we want to decrease that to one half of that value. 0.005. Keep the solver type stochastic gradient descent. This advanced button just pulls up some parameters that um, we can use for essentially sculpting the learning curve um, or the learning learning rate curve. We don't really need to use these features to train this neural network. So instead we're just going to uh, just make those two modifications and I'll, I'll click back to the standard networks tab so we can see again that we have selected Google Net and there are some links here to the original papers. These are worth reading and reading over the uh, you can of course just copy and paste the proto text into a text editor for future reference it will help you to understand what's going on in the networks okay so um, further down in this page we select we have two options or two ways of selecting what GPUs we want to assign to the computation we can either 
just uh, specify a flat number from 1 to 4. In this case, we have 4 GPUs available without regard to which GPUs get selected for the compute task. Here we're going to use all four, so I can just say four and uh, it, it's going to select all of them. In uh, some later benchmarking that I'll be doing, I will actually consider selecting a Tesla K80 from two different cards. So in some, at least in benchmarking cases, this is a, a useful feature uh, for benchmarking. Okay, so uh, down here I'm just going to name the classifier. So SUV classifier it has an expanded set. And here I just am essentially uh, encoding the parameters uh, that I've chosen. And I think we're running on node 6. So I'm just going to change. Oh, shoot. Okay, so that's um, that's going to take a, a little second to uh, re-render there. Uh, that'll that'll be back in just a second. Okay, here we are. All right, so I'm just going to change this to uh, node six, and we're using four K80s, and uh, there's no need to specify which K80s those are because we're using all of them. And then this is a tutorial. And then we just click create, and this uh, will in fact take uh, slightly less than 10 hours to fully compute the network using all four uh, K80s. So please later refer to the uh, written portion of the blog where we'll have uh, benchmarking figures prepared so we can compare the run times on four K80 GPUs versus say two K80 GPUs on the same card versus two K80 GPUs on different cards. And then uh, we will also contrast the runtime to two K40 GPUs. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video here. We can see that the uh, the cafe uh, training has uh, has already started, and down here there is uh, there is a progress graph that shows uh, the accuracy as a function of time. We'll get to see that a bit later, towards perhaps uh, at some point uh, during the training. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it here. Okay, um, so just briefly here. I wanted to indicate a feature of digits 2.1, uh, which is that you can monitor the um, utilization and the memory usage, and also the temperature of each of the uh, GPUs uh, that are doing the uh, compute task. And here we we can sort of uh, monitor the progress of of the neural network, its performance as progresses from uh, epic to epic. Here we haven't even quite reached the first epic and keep in mind that we're we're going to be training this network for 60 epics. It's uh, likely that this will plateau in its performance maybe around the 30th epic. Uh, you can actually if you're satisfied with the performance, you, you can actually stop the training at that point, and, and it, it saves it as it goes along. I have it set so that it saves it at every every one epoch. And you can sort of monitor the progress here uh, in this window. This is where we launched uh, the server that's running on node 6. Uh, we see that it's uh, just a little bit over 1% complete with the task. Um, in this window, I, uh, I had just a few moments ago launched another uh, digits uh, server uh, that's uh, running. I, 
I think on it looks like node four. So here uh, we see that it's uh, it's been allocated to node four, and we can uh, node four uh, incidentally has the K40s. So um, I'm going to do some benchmarking on node four. Uh, so we'll get to see the, uh, the results of the benchmarking comparing uh, the various configurations of K80s uh, versus uh, the, the K40s. All right, we're going to pause here again. Okay, here we are in Node 4. Um, unlike Node 6, uh, Node 4 has K40s, and we see here there are are two out of two uh, GPUs available. These are K40 uh, GPUs. So um, I'm just going to do the same as uh, what we did before. I'm going to uh, go to images uh, classification model. <clears throat> Selecting our recent data set. And I'm going to use the same uh, solver options, 60 epics. Select the standard network Google Net. And then finally, the learning rate. I'm going to modify that to half the default value. Uh, just like I had done with the uh, the four uh, K80s. Okay, then of course here we're going to select uh, both K40s. So there are only K40s on this node. And we're using both of them. And then we just have to name the model, and uh, we're going to say these are where we have two K40s here uh, running with the same modified parameters. So this is um, this is set to go. All right. So we'll uh, it'll be interesting to see how long uh, this takes to uh, complete the network training. Uh, I will publish the results in a um, uh, table on the blog, uh, so this will perhaps clear up some questions in the community uh, regarding the performance of K40s and multiple K40s and multiple K K80s. Uh, so, uh, so okay, so uh, <clears throat> perhaps tomorrow morning uh, I'll resume and uh, we'll take a look at the result of the um, uh, the K80 calculation, uh, and then we'll get to uh, test the the network. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we're back. Um, it took a l little less time than I thought it would for the calculation to finish for the model. Uh, it took about six hours. So once the uh, training and validation is uh, finished, the model is saved to file. Then to test the model, uh, we can upload images further down the page. And we can send um, these images to the online digit server. Or you can uh, provide a URL uh, in this text field here. Uh, and this will cause the digit server to pull it off the web. Okay, so here we're just going to uh, upload an image of a Jeep Cherokee. And uh, this checkbox here um, will tell digits to report the the activations for the various layers for the convolution and pooling layers in the neural network. Um, so I'm, I'm going to check that box uh, so when the report comes up we'll also see the activations. Okay and um, of course the images that you use to test the model uh, must not be members of the 
the training or, or your validation set. Okay, it should just take a few more seconds. Okay, so here we are. So the network classifies this correctly as a Jeep Cherokee. So some of the uh, classifications turned out to be uh, failures. While there were 19 of 21, or rather 19 of 21 successful classifications were reported with over 90% certainty while seven of eight failures were also reported with over 90% certainty. So in summary, 72% of the images were correctly classified. So these results uh, indicate that the network is acquiring some information and is able to discern uh, some features between the Jeep Cherokee and the Land Rover. But there still seems to be some problem uh, with this particular uh, network because seven of the eight misclassifications were reported with over a 90% confidence level. Um, this might be due to some noisiness in the image set or uh, there might be some overfitting to the data uh, despite the expansion of the of each uh, image set um, for each respective category uh, to having over uh, approximately 30,000 images. So this concludes this introduction to NVIDIA Digits. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and that you will stay tuned to Microwave's blogs for more information on digits and other new emerging applications. Thank you for listening.